Welcome to another Learn, Grow, Invest video. My name is Jeremy McDonald. I'm one of the founders of this community. Today, we're going to talk all about dividends. Now, there are two main ways to make money from stocks, capital gains or dividends. Now, dividend is a portion of a company's profit paid out to its shareholders. That's all it is. But there's much more to understand about dividends than just knowing what it is. So we're going to talk about that today. So we're going to talk all about dividends today. We're going to go through step by step to help you to understand what dividends are, what the different ways and strategies to make money with dividends. You know, what's a dividend mandate? What are the dates surrounding a dividend announcement and how you can leverage this to maximize your investing returns overall? Now, if it's your first time here, we're a Bible based investment community that covers all range all the different ranges of investment topics and so we're here to support you as you learn and grow as an investor now what we want to do here is encourage you also to remember the lord your god for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and we see that in deuteronomy 8 18. so we pray that this community is a blessing to you and for you we encourage you to share this content with others so they can learn and grow as investors. We actually did a poll in our Telegram group. And we asked persons, you know, what means more to you? Capital gains, dividends, or both? And actually most persons said both, and then following that were capital gains. So really we find that dividend investing is not necessarily the most popular in general. And that's because, well, one of the reasons I think is that not everybody understands it. So. The hope with this video is that we're going to explain some of the key concepts surrounding dividend investing. We're going to talk about things like a dividend mandate and what it means, dividend yield, dividend payout. I'm going to show you how to calculate how many dividends, how much in dividends you'll receive if you're if you're holding a dividend stock. We're going to talk about the drip in the drip method which simply means, you know, dividend reinvestment. And, you know, we're going to cover some, some topics, um, you know, surrounding dividends. We're going to take some questions from our community as well. You know, we, we asked before we recorded this video, what questions do persons have surrounding dividends? So I'm going to answer those at the end. So stick around for that. And if you have any questions coming out of watching this video, let me know in the comments below and we'll answer it as soon as we can. So before I continue, I have to say here that any information reviewed here is for discussion, education, entertainment, and illustrative purposes only, and should not be construed as professional financial advice, solicitation, or recommendation to buy or sell any securities. We're going to be using some examples from the Jamaica Stock Exchange, and I don't want you to misconstrue me using these companies as examples as me saying you should buy these companies. So a dividend is a portion of a company's profits paid out to its shareholders. That's really what it boils down to. That's all it is, right? So no, not every company pays a dividend. It depends on the, the company's approach in terms of how they like to manage their profits because that, that's what dividend is, right? It's, it's a paying out of the profits to the shareholders of the company. Now, some companies choose to retain those profits for expansion, for daily cash flow needs, et cetera. So not every company is known to pay a dividend, and that's okay because usually there are companies that you can look to or a group of companies that are typically known as dividend-paying companies, and I'll show you how to identify them, show you how to calculate which one is better to invest in, and, you know, we're going to talk about some of the things that you should consider before selecting dividend companies. Why do companies pay dividends? Very good question. I've, I've identified three reasons here. Let me know in the comments below if you can think of any more. The first reason is they want to reward shareholders for their loyalty. Now, it's very important for some companies to maintain or have a reputation of paying dividends especially if it's a blue chip company, for example, that maybe won't see the same aggressive growth as some of the, um, the smaller cap companies or, the, or, or typically what's known as growth stocks. 
they, some companies would want to maintain a regular payment of dividends so that investors can feel like, okay, I'm not getting the same capital gains here, but at least I have a payout of dividends to expect each year. The next thing is that it signals consistent performance and stable cash flow. If you can receive quarterly dividends or buy annual dividends consistently from a company, three years, five years, 10 years, it's usually a sign of consistent performance that would be generating enough profits to pay as dividends. The third is that you do have situations that companies can pay what are called special dividends. We'll actually look at an example later on, but a special dividend is typically a one-off payment that is made. Maybe the company got uh, a one-off um, transaction that was large enough to be able to pay this special dividend. Maybe they made more than the usual amount of profits. It may vary, but it is usually not the same amount as the regular dividend payment. So if normally they would pay one cent, it could be, you know, 10 cents, 20 cents, 30 cents. It varies, but it would be identified as a special dividend. What are the benefits of dividend investing? There are four that we're going to talk about here. Again, let me know if you can think of any in the comments below. The first one is that it's passive income. You have the opportunity with dividends to get cash for your shares and you can choose to, to reinvest that or take that and, and pay for you know whatever you, you wish. So that that extra cash that you're getting is in addition to whatever capital gains you may be receiving and you would still have the shares for that company. So that's a really big benefit that a lot of investors who, who focus on dividends look forward to. That is the main selling point of dividends really. So if you speak to a financial advisor and you tell them you're investing for income, they're going to point you to dividend yielding stocks. The next is the drip strategy. That's a very good benefit. Unfortunately, I could only find one company in Jamaica that offers this, and that was Sterling Investments Limited. They are the ones that I saw with this policy. I didn't see any other company show this, but what you can do, and this is what I do for some of the stocks I hold, is that when I get that dividend, I reinvest it specifically in the company that I got the dividend from. So that's sort of like doing a manual drip strategy. And I find that it helps me accumulate more shares over time because, you know, if you think, you know, the, you see the real benefit of dividends over a longer time period. So if you've been consistently reinvesting your dividends, you'll have an opportunity to see your shares grow over time. Now, I'm going to talk about a little bit later in the strategies for dividend investing, how we can combine that with dollar cost averaging to see even more returns long term. Next, I spoke about this before, which it, it's a reward for being a shareholder. So companies will want to reward their shareholders with dividends wherever and whenever possible. And finally, and this is something that I thought was interesting, and I'm, I'm curious to see what people will think here, is that what I've seen in some cases, there's an impact, at least in the short term, on the stock price if the company offers an attractive dividend. So when are dividends paid? Dividends can be paid quarterly, biannually, or annually. It really depends on the approach that the board of directors of the company decide to take. Now, usually companies will communicate in advance what their strategy is relating to dividends. So it's not usually going to make you, it, it's not usually going to catch you by surprise. It's usually communicated in advance as a part of the company's strategy to attract investors. Now, you may see a new company listed that says, well, we're going to take, you know, 25% of net profits to pay out as dividends to shareholders. When they announce that, they will typically say, you know, at the end of the financial year, at the end of the, at some point during the year, et cetera. And then usually you'll see a notice comes out that says, you know, the board of directors are meeting to consider a dividend. Usually when you see them considering a dividend, you're going to see something coming out pretty soon to either confirm it. Very, very rarely you'll see something to say they've decided not to pay. But I, I don't think I've ever seen where a company is considering and did not pay a dividend, right? So you can look out for those notices. 
So we're going to use an example here of the lab. And I'm going to show this. So there's this notice that they, they released on the 24th of December in 2020. And this was to say that, so it says here, the Limners and Bards Limited Lab has advised that their board of directors at its meeting held on December 22 approved the ordinary dividend 0.034 per share and a special dividend of 4 cents per share. These payments will be made on January 22nd to all shareholders on record as of January 8th, 2021. The ex-dividend date is, July, is January 7th, 2021. Now there's a lot of information here that will help you understand how a dividend work, when you're going to get paid. So let's break it down. So we have the announcement or declaration date. That's December 24th, 2020. That's when the notice would have been released on the Stock Exchange's website. Then we have the ex-dividend date, which would be January 7th, 2021. Now that's the date that you need, that's that's the, the date that you need to note if you're trying to receive a dividend from this company, because based on our local rules, you'll need to be a shareholder two trading days before this date. So if you try to purchase these shares on the ex-dividend date, it won't work because based on our rules, the settlement takes two days, right? Then we have the record date as, as at January 8th, on that day, they're going to look to see the shareholders who are on record for that day. Those are the shareholders that are going to get the payout. And then the payment date is January 22nd. So those are all the dates that, that you need to focus on here. Note it did say a special dividend as well. As I said, I'll break that down a little later. So these are all the dates again that, are, that came out. So we have the announcement date, ex-dividend date, record date, and payment date. So these are all the dates you, you typically see in the one announcement. These are very important to know. A lot of persons may try to purchase on the ex-dividend date, and then they wonder why they didn't get the dividend. It's because you that is the, the expiration date. So you cannot purchase on the ex-dividend date. You need to be a shareholder at least two trading days before. And I'll just say here, as it relates to the payment date, typically it means, so if you are receiving your payment by check in the mail, you'll see it maybe a week or two, depending on how the post office delivers that mail. If you do what's called a dividend mandate, then you can order that those dividends be paid directly to your bank account. We're going to cover that later on in the video. So a dividend yield is calculated by by taking your annual dividends per share and dividing it by the price per share now if a company well what you would do here is sum up all the dividends so if a company pays dividends quarterly you're going to add all of them together and divide that um at the price per share at the end of the financial year uh, or the end of that period that you're calculating it for. So if, if, it, if, it's, if it's for 2021, you're going to look at all the dividends that were paid in 2021 and divide it by the price as at the last day in 2021, all right? And I'm going to show you an, an example of that later on. Next, we have the dividend reinvestment plan or DRIP. So this is where you take the proceeds from your dividends and they're automatically reinvested in the same stock which you had received the dividend for in the first place. Now, as I said, only Sterling Investments Limited I could find on the Jamaica Stock Exchange that does this, that do provide this, this option. I know that for my US portfolio, I am able to do that for those companies. So I've been able to just automate that. So I don't have to worry about what will happen to the cash that I receive in dividends. I'll see that dividends were paid, and then the following day, I'll see that shares were purchased with that cash. So you're going to have your usual tax that are collected, any fees that may be there, um, depending on how things are set up for, for, for my drip plan that I have with, with, with my U.S. portfolio. I do see, I do have a non-resident tax to pay. 
I believe that's the only tax I pay and then shares are purchased. Next, we have dividend payout. Now to calculate the amount of money you will receive as your dividend payout, you want to take the number of shares you have and multiply that by the dividend amount. So we're gonna take that amount um, 0.034 cents and multiply that by, in this case, let's say that we have 10,000 shares. That would give me a payout of $340 before any applicable taxes, All right? If I had 100,000 shares though, that would give me 3,400. So you see here where one of the benefits of dividend is of dividend investing is when you have more shares, you get a higher dividend payout if that company pays dividends. Now, this is where a lot of persons may say, well, I don't invest for dividends because when I look at, let's say I have 100,000 shares and that, and that company is, or, or that stock is selling for $5 a share, I would, I would have a $500,000 portfolio and be getting only $3,400. That's one mindset where another mindset is I have 500,000 value in shares. I can benefit from the capital gains, if any, and I get an added benefit of 3,400 per share um, for all the shares that I have. So it depends on your mindset. Now, I believe if you have an opportunity to make extra money, you take that and you find companies that can give you the desired return. Now, if you are all for capital gains, then you want to focus on growth stocks. If you're not all for capital gains and you want to benefit from dividends too, this is one of the considerations that you need to make. Is the dividend yield worth it? And we're going to show you how to calculate that. So I, I, I spoke about how to calculate your payout. So let's say that I received 0.136 in total dividend payment for that year and I have 10,000 shares, and I would have gotten 1,360 before taxes, my dividend yield, if, if that stock ended the, the year at $3.43, my dividend yield would be 3.96%. Now, I would then have to compare that with the other dividend-paying companies on the market to see whether or not this is attractive or not. Dividend yield always has to be taken in context with other companies that pay dividends. So I can't say if this is a good yield or not. It depends on factors like what, what were the previous payouts, um, what were the previous stock prices, and what how, how other companies are paying that dividend within that same industry. So a dividend mandate is instructions that you send to handle your dividend payments. So I'm going to show you what the site looks like. So let me locate that. So I'm going to share the URL. And here we go. So, so it says here, managing your dividend payment with a mandate. So I'm just going to scroll down. But it says here, all investors can manage their dividend payment by completing a mandate form. That's a JCSD investor instruction form and provide the required information to have their their dividend payment deposited in the institution of their choice. Now you do this because one, you don't have to worry about going to lodge that dividend check. I've, I can tell you from personal experience, I've had checks sometimes for four months, six months before I remember that I have them to lodge. So if you do a dividend mandate, it goes to your account automatically, or you can have it sent to your broker account automatically, and then just simply make a purchase of of shares when needed. So I'm gonna show you what is needed. So it says here, it, it, it explains what a mandate is. I've already done that. And it's saying there are three types, bank, hold, and third party. The information that you need are here for, for the form. The hold mandate, you can, you can wish that the dividend or interest payment is held at the registrar's office. Now I can't imagine why you'd want to do that. <laughs> but um, you may choose to. Third party mandate is if you want the dividend or interest payment to be sent to someone other than the parties on the account. So that is an option. And finally, you could just have it sent to your bank account, as I said before. So I'm gonna share this link in the description of this video, check it out and be sure to have this done. It's extremely important. 
I advocate for it because it saves you, right? You also have to think about the opportunity that your dividend check gets lost or misplaced. Uh, I don't know why anyone would steal it because it's not in their name, but lost or misplaced or or delayed, maybe you know something that's un unfavorable for you. So I'm going to share some some resources here with you. So you have the Jamaica Stock Exchange where you'll be able to see the corporate actions for each of the company. So I'm actually let me show you what that looks like as well. So we have here the Jamaica Stock Exchange website, and we're looking at the lab. So when I scroll down here, and this is the new JC website, I don't know if you've seen it before. So corporate actions are here, and we'll see that for 2021, the lab would have announced two dividends. This is where you'd see the history and look at corporate actions. You also could go to the latest news and scroll through that to see any dividend announcement. So remember I said earlier, you typically see a company consider a dividend and then shortly after they'll announce a dividend, right? So it says that they will meet on July 13th and then one week later on July 20th, it was announced that a dividend is going to be paid. So you want to spend some time in this new section for the company to understand what, how and when the dividends will be paid out. And as I said, we understood from that example, we're going to look at the announcement date, X date, record date, and payment date. Next, we have Investopedia. Now, that's an excellent site for dividend investing information. There are a lot of things that I couldn't hope to cover within the scope of this video. It is meant to be a complete guide to get you started, but there are a lot of you know articles that have been written on Investopedia to speak about dividend investing. So I'd encourage that you just check them out. Just go to the page, search for the word dividend, and you'll see all of their articles. I'm sure you can learn a lot there. And of course, you definitely want to stay tuned to the Learn, Grow, Invest YouTube channel because we're going to have videos to talk about capital gains versus dividend investing, the pros and cons. We're going to speak about you know other topics relating to this at a later date. So you want to stay tuned. So one of the questions I get asked a lot is... Do I choose capital gains or do I choose dividends? Now, as with most things in the realm of investing, it comes down to you, the investor, to determine which is the priority for you. Now, usually when you're trying to find out your risk profile, you'll select the things that matter to you the most. Some persons invest for income. If your priority is income, then dividend is what you want to focus on because capital gains aren't guaranteed. So usually the trade-off is, okay, the companies that are known to do well with dividends aren't usually known to do great in terms of capital gains. So in terms of choosing either or, the ceiling for capital gains is much higher. So it really depends on you, the investor, what's important to you. If you want guaranteed income, guaranteed loosely, then you want to look to dividends because the company that you've invested in depending on the climate, depending on how the quarter goes, there may be unforeseen events. And I guess you could argue that those unforeseen events could impact the dividends as well. But let's just say the company doesn't perform the way you're expecting. They may still pay a dividend, but you may not get the capital gains that you're, you're, you're expecting. Next question that I get a lot is what are some good dividend investing strategies? So, you know, the first one is that you can buy for for capital appreciation and dividends in the short term. This is called a dividend capture strategy. And what that means is that in anticipation, so you remember that same dividend consideration, in some cases, not all, in some cases, depending on how good the dividend is expected to be based on how good the profits might have been, you may see a brief short-term capital appreciation and you can benefit from that in addition to the dividend. So sometimes, because not every investor knows the difference between the between the ex-dividend date, there are some of them that don't understand that if you try to purchase on that date to get dividends, you may not get it. There may be a, a slight increase in price for that stock. So you can benefit from maybe 
you know, some slight increase in, in capital appreciation in addition to the dividend. So you win in both ways. That's one strategy. The next is the drip strategy that we spoke about previously. So you would take those dividends, you'd reinvest them consistently, and then you'll, you'll build on that allocation over time. This is the most reliable strategy I find in that it, it, it allows you to increase your position out over time without adding your own capital back to it. This is something I've done for a few companies in my portfolio, it works well. And then the third step I would say, or the third strategy is to do drip in addition with dollar cost averaging. Meaning as you are reinvesting the dividends, your dollar cost averaging into the stock, whether each month, each quarter, et cetera. So you build up a sizable position over time. So instead of getting a $500 dividend check, you're getting you know, a $10,000 dividend check or a 20 or a 30,000 dividend check if you have you know, um, significant volume within that company. So these are three dividend investing strategies that you can think about and they'll really, really help you level up in terms of your dividends. I want to now talk about some risks because as with every investment strategy, there are some risks to consider. Number one risk I would say in terms of a dividend strategy is that dividends are not guaranteed. What that means we saw with COVID-19, some companies opted not to pay dividends because they wanted to preserve their cash. So that's one, dividends aren't guaranteed. Next is that dividends at some point, for whatever reason, may become inconsistent. So a company may be known to pay one each quarter, but for some reason, maybe they have growth on, on, on the horizon and instead of issuing more shares or, re, or taking out more debt, they choose to use retained earnings, which is where dividends come from, to fund that. So they may say, well, until further notice, we're gonna pause our dividend payments so we can use this capital to go and do something with it. So that's something to think about. And the third risk here is that you, you pretty much can leave capital gains on the table when you show preference to dividends. So what I mean by that is you may be, get, you may be getting consistent dividends, it's really good, but then you may, in your best year, you may get 10%, 20% dividends, but if you maybe focused or had a more balanced portfolio in, term, in, in terms of growth versus dividend stocks, if you let's say you only focused on growth now growth companies come with their own risk but let's say that you had 10 stocks five did really well five did really poorly in some cases you may still end up a little bit more you get the idea there is no ceiling to capital gains right we've seen some companies do 300 plus percent last year whereas the best dividend yielding company did 10 percent so 10%, 300%, it's really no contest. However, to me, dividend investing makes sense because it's, it's additional cash flow. It's cash in addition to potential capital gains. So it just makes sense if that money is available to strategically position your portfolio to take advantage of it. And so we get the best of both. We asked our community to share with us some questions that they had about dividend investing in advance. Uh, so we're going to go through those now, answer it. Now, this is from a personal perspective. As I said, this is not financial advice. These are just my thoughts. So if you have a different perspective, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Now, one person asked, which is more profitable, capital gains or dividends? Now, I think the answer here is is very clear it has to be capital gains right so there are, there are many benefits to dividends now they can be reinvested which will allow you to, to organically increase your allocation over time which can be very powerful let me let me ask you a question what would you take a company that that doubles in terms of you get 100 percent capital gains versus maybe a 10 percent or even a 20 percent dividend of course you'll take the capital gains so in terms of which is more profitable in the long run, you want companies that perform well. It's just that both are, are benefits of investing. Capital gains would essentially have no ceiling 
but usually dividends are within a certain threshold because even if a company pays a special dividend that's very attractive, consistently you're going to see, especially in Jamaica, I think the highest dividend yielding company I've seen is about 10%. So maybe if you have you know, 10% each year and that's reinvested, you know, over time, those dividend gains may, may accumulate and be significant. The trade-off though here is that usually companies that are known to pay really good dividends aren't also known to provide great capital gains. It's, it's, it's not that they won't grow or they won't grow well, it's just that they won't grow at the same pace as typically what's known as a growth stock. Next question is, what are the stocks that offer both capital gains and dividends? Now these, uh, I'll share a listing below that goes through the companies that would have paid um, dividends for 2021. I'll, I'll, I'll leave a link to it as well. You can go through it. Now all companies have their own dividend policies. Not every company will pay a dividend. That's just it really, it really depends on the type of company and their priorities. But all companies that pay dividends have the potential for capital gains as well. I'll answer it that way. But not every company that is listed pays dividends. So hopefully that, that answers it. And I'm going to show you the list that I received, the report that showed all the companies that paid a dividend in 2021. So you're going to see this is a long list of companies here. This is four pages. So a lot of these companies are here now. Some of these are one-off payments. Some of these were quarterly payments. Some of these might have been special dividends. It, it varies per company. So you'd have to go through a report like this, see, you know, see the, the companies that would have been paying, you know, maybe each quarter, add those together, calculate the dividend yield, see how many shares you, you could afford to have of that stock. And then you can determine what that payout would look like, depending on the position you want to take in that company. And you can, you know, do an assessment in that way, but there is no listing of, of to say, these are the dividend paying companies on the Jamaica Stock Exchange, because this list would not include the companies who paid a dividend in 2020, but did not pay one in 2021. So there are some companies that took the, the decision based on COVID not to pay a dividend. So those companies would not be here. So to use this list only would not be appropriate because there may be companies that paid the year before or the year before and have not paid any since. So just bear that in mind. Next question is what's the best approach to dividend investing? Personally, I recommend if you have a stock in your portfolio that is for dividend um, income, I would recommend you use the drip method and you dollar cost average into that company. What that allows is that while you're buying more shares through your dividends, you're, you're also adding to your position through dollar cost averaging. And so the dividends will, will increase over time by both you adding shares and reinvesting the dividends when they come. That is a strategy that I find to be most impactful to the size of the, of, of, of the allocation. So, one of the things that I did personally a few years back, I noticed I was getting dividend checks of like 35 cents or 50 cents or $1. And I said, wait, this doesn't make sense. And I'd look at the, the value of that stock and I'd say, well, I have, a, I have maybe 200 or 300,000 in shares and I'm barely getting a dividend. It doesn't make sense. So I would say, okay, I'm no longer going to count this as a dividend stock. If I'm expecting great dividends from a company, I'm going to look at the dividend yield, work with a threshold that is acceptable to me, and then I'm going to invest accordingly. So if, if I've found a good dividend yielding stock, I'll say, okay, how much I'd try to look at maybe their last year of payout or the last two or three years, then I'll say, okay, if my targeting dividends 
from this company is $10,000 or $20,000. All right, how many shares do I need to get to get that amount of money? And that's how I would, in terms of list all, listing all the Jamaican companies that offer dividends and what frequency, but I've mentioned that before. So you look to the corporate actions, you check news there are rss feeds that you can set up to get access to jamaica stock exchange news so if you have companies on your watch list you can you know get that information as to when they'll be paying a dividend when you see there's a dividend consideration then you can expect to hear within a week or two the company's decision but usually the companies that pay you quarterly will try to maintain that cadence Usually companies that pay at least once per year will try and maintain that. And usually those who pay twice per year will try and maintain. There's usually some amount of consistency unless there are extenuating um, circumstances that would not allow them to do that. So I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope it was really valuable to you. If it was, please consider leaving it a like. Please also share it with a friend. Help more persons understand what dividend investing is because from what I'm seeing in our communities based on the questions being asked, not everybody understands how to go about having a dividend investment strategy that works. So I think this video would be helpful for those who are considering it but are not sure how everything works. And thirdly, if you're not yet a subscriber, please consider subscribing. We post weekly content on various investment topics. I'm actually going to link another video here that you should check out if you have not done so as yet. Be sure to join us um, for stock reviews that happen at least twice per month. We, we review various companies and one of the things we talk about is whether or not that company pays dividends. So it's very good to check out those sessions and you know overall we, we look forward to you joining us in, our, in, in, in one of our community groups.